Welcome everyone to my presentation, Discovery of Digital Forensic Dataset Characteristics with Case Corpora. My name is Alex Nelson, and I come to you in a few more roles that I just couldn't fit into that pillar of ribbons from this week's conference. Uh, my talk comes with a standard NIST disclaimer. As a federal employee, anything I mention is not an endorsement or recommendation. So the world we live in is we always need test data, and with great luck, we happen to just keep getting it. Ample motivations exist. Uh, there's needs in professional training and certification to make data sets. Uh, papers need to prove points for their research. Uh, contests and capture flags need to prove points for fun. And uh, investigations need to prove points uh, to reproduce results and uh, to demonstrate how um, demonstrate hypotheses, uh, whether they are for current investigations or things you think are going to happen in the near future and will be a really good reference point. Um, the problem is, how do we find the data when we need it? Uh, it's a it's a significant social challenge in part. Uh, how do you find your test data? Uh, uh, InfoSec Twitter has been a handy way for me to come to discover a data set every few weeks or so. Uh, do you trawl through conferences and journals proceedings uh, for papers that make their own data? Do you build the data yourself if you do? Do you release it? Um, data reuse and release was uh, low in the field uh, circa 2017, according to a survey of some hundreds of uh, papers. How do you then find the data after it's been published for a while? Uh, corpus management for data remains a significant challenge, and that's just like within the lab. Um, tracking terabytes of data and shuffling it around and making sure the hashes are still good after a while is a significant logistical challenge. Uh, corpus distribution and discovery, that is getting the data out of the lab for other people to use, uh, is harder. Uh, so the way we're approaching this uh, challenge is building an index. Case Corpora is a forensic data catalog. Uh, it's an index of metadata about data sets. We extend a language that does talk about just data cataloging uh, with forensic concepts. We, among the concepts we include are chain of custody details uh, and encoding author's ground truth descriptions. Uh, those descriptions are usually done as nicely formatted reports, a lot of natural na English uh, narratives or other natural language narratives, um, but that relies on natural language search. We are using another language uh, that is structured for search discovery and cross verification of your results. So you can see if the results you got uh, from your tool or analysis happen to match the result from the encoded ground truth. And then we have also these uh, a suite of case general purpose tools, not necessarily related to case core, but that do help you interface with the data and uh, that we use to maintain the data quality. So outline of this talk, we're going to go into a little bit of background on graphs and ontologies. Uh, we'll cover ontologies used in case corpora. One of them is on provenance. We'll dig a bit into provenance. Then we'll talk about how you interface with the data set yourself. So onto the background. The data in case corpora is written as RDF, uh, resources data framework. Uh, it's a language for defining a graph. For instance, a graph can include people and how they relate to one another. Those people, classes into which the people fall, and uh, ways the ways the people relate to one another as individuals or as class members are defined in ontologies. Uh, there is a significant difference between ontologies and data models, but for the purposes of this talk, all you need to know uh, is we are not talking about relational databases when we're talking about case corpora. We're talking about um, uh, graphs and generally those graphs are backed by some underlying ontology for uh, people interested in the uh in the data weeds uh, rdf serializes interchangeably in several formats including xml uh json and a special uh, subclass of json called json linked data and another language called turtle uh, so if you review the case corporate data yourself you'll see ttl files that's turtle but the, all those languages cross um uh, translate between one another without lo information loss. Now, uh, why we talked about uh, this is a graph, not relational, because the way uh, the data is interfaced with is uh, 
using a certain specialized query language. The way to query graph data differs uh, in that the language is graph purposed. Uh, one of these graph purpose languages is Sparkle. Um, it uses path queries to let you know answer let you know answers to questions based on numbers of hops or edges to traverse to get from one node to another. Queries can also let you review which kinds of relationships link to nodes. Uh, those relationships are provided by ontologies. Our example ontology from one side back uh, might be purposed on defining the erdos bacon number for pairs of people, which means we need to know whether person X co-authored a math article with Y or whether they co-starred in a film together. Uh, knowing those relationships lets us calculate a degree of separation between nodes. That's a harder question to answer with a relational model than it is with a graph model. So a little bit more on ontologies that are not our example ontologies. Um, uh, the, the Cyber Domain Ontology Project provides uh, one of the uh, one of the three pillar ontologies uh, used in case corpora. Uh, CDO is a uh, Linux Foundation project as of January 2022. It is a, an umbrella project for a case in UCO, which were both first drafted and had the communities formed in 2016. Uh, and CDO is a place where uh, case UCO and other future communities of interest will do ontological development. So the two initial ontologies in CDO are UCO, the Unified Cyber Ontology, a mid-level ontology that provides cross-domain cyber concepts. For instance, UCO includes files, hashes of files, relationships, how um, certain cyber items uh, may relate, relate to one another as observable objects, uh, general actions that have inputs and outputs. Overall, UCO has some hundreds of classes, not intending to be specialized to any one domain of interest uh, or community of interest. CASE uh, is one of these communities of interest. It's focused on uh, investigations. It, CASE is an ontology built on top of UCO and defines concepts relevant to all manners of cyberspace investigations, including incident response, digital forensics, and others. Uh, you may have been following CASE UCO development uh, over the last few years. Uh, version 1.0 is scheduled for about six weeks from now. Uh, August 30, we're stamping 1.0. So if you're interested in interfacing with the community, it's always a good time. Uh, if you want to uh, talk about backwards and compatible changes, we're going to uh, follow Simver uh, on August 30. So non-CD ontologies in case corpora. Uh, there are two ontologies that uh, serve great purposes for the purpose of, uh, of cataloging data and talking about history, uh, but they're not really cyberspace oriented. Um, they're more general purpose. DCAT, uh, the data catalog vocabulary, is RDF-based model uh, for describing data sets. It includes what resources under data sets, that is like the documentation files, payload files, uh, where to download these files, and other publication level metadata, like how often is it updated, who's the point of contact. Uh, you may have seen DCAT in the wild if you've gone to data.gov. Uh, they have uh, structured metadata representations for datasets and data.gov. Uh, all that vocabulary is drawn from DCAT, DCAT US. Uh, Provo is the provenance ontology. This is uh, an OWL implementation. OWL is one of the ontology languages. Uh, an OWL implementation of histories of objects. Um, we're actually going to dig quite a bit more into the provenance ontology uh, in this next section of the talk. So. Bravo represents and uh, happily provides us a, a design grammar for illustrating provenance. Um, thank goodness for the grammar. I didn't have to pick colors for doing these graphs. Provo is built upon three foundational classes, activities, agents, and entities. Entities gen tend to be the things that you want to talk about the history of. Um, as part of their design elements also, time and logical ordering illustrates flowing downward. Uh, this figure on the right side of the screen is an example of a Provo graph using their design grammar effectively. Uh, this is drawn from a uh, example from the case website, the urgent evidence narrative, uh, where a uh, a digital device is submitted, needs to be processed uh, immediately, approximately. Um, and this figure shows the history of one file pulled out from this rapid processing uh, 
in the history of the file as the yellow uh, circle in the, in the bottom of this graph shows the derivation comes from just the device based on the blue box uh, plugging the device into his kiosk. Um, Case has a practice for uh, using some certain Provo concepts. Providence chains in case link back to initial evidence submission. And we define initial as uh, it was the result of some action that that uh, had no inputs. Uh, the way we define no inputs is a certain entity in the Provo, the empty set, uh, Provo prov empty collection. So if we have links of our object of interest going all the way back to prop empty collection uh, without diversion, we have a good chain of custody. Case uh, has its own concepts for chain of custody that um, include provenance records and investigative actions. Uh, provenance records are how an object was handled. Happily, we found that uh, case maps into Provo mechanically. So we can take a graph of a case investigations provenance chain. This is that same random graph from before, uh, no real shape to it. We can feed this graph into a tool, case prov RDF. And this tool will generate Provo ontology statements as like overlay statements and say, and this, yes, we map directly to Provo based on just mechanical translation of case concepts. And knowing that if we have uh, certain uh, pairs of associations, then they will uh, say we can uh, map this prov idea uh, and enrich the prov idea. The prov ideas are general derivation. The case ideas get into more detail on how the, the, these derivations happened. So why we're doing this uh, within the context of case corpora is that data sets uh, benefit significantly from provenance review, and in some cases we found have a, a significant need. So the graph on the right is hand sketched. Uh, took me a bit under 10 minutes to do. Um, it's for the Digital Corpora Android 10 data set, an Android 10 phone that was seeded with uh, some dozens of applications that were exercised to various degrees with timestamps that artifacts were or actions were taken. So timestamps you would you would expect them to be found on on, uh, on the device uh, with associations. So uh, there's a lot of uh, rich uh, data annotation that went to this. Uh, if we were to start this data set in uh, case corpora, we would start with DCAT uh, says, OK, this is just generally a data set has these downloadable resources. DCAT alone gives us one node in the middle of this provenance graph. Uh, this is the thing you would download. It has the link that uh, uh, that gets you a zip file. Um, that's all that DCAT gives us. Doesn't give us any sort of uh, fixity or chain of custody information, though. No hashes are included in here. Um, now, the provenance uh, sketch is, let's take this and go back in time. And because I want to link to the Android 10 phone, that first circle at the top of this graph, uh, that's part of what's going to make this data set interesting. Hey, it's data about an Android phone. Uh, so there should be a provenance link of what I download that goes back to the Android phone. Uh, this sketch of provenance shows the files that were hashed and led to the downloadable link. Um, the provenance here, uh, the provenance of up, up above the uh, the DCAT uh, link, that uh, that is stuff that we uh, sketched based on the log a, a log file from a tool included in the download distribution. Uh, going forward in time, there is the downloadable uh, archive of the investigation. Going down is I downloaded it and I tried to follow through some of the uh, uh, some of the documentation to reconstruct what I would feed into a tool. Um, then this is where we end up finding that there's significant benefit uh, to doing providence review going backwards and forwards in time from the resource that DCAT represents. Uh, the reason we sketch provenance with Provo is in part to exercise cases provenance and representation of investigative actions, cool cyber classes and items that led to the zip file that users download. The provenance structure in case should map to the Provo sketch, help us confirm we can derive what we sketched. Then we can confirm if someone feeds a file from this data set into a test of their own, the hashes of their inputs match at least what someone reconstructed and logged in case corpora. 
And hopefully we find that what we downloaded, reconstructed, matches what was logged with the data set. If it doesn't, well, then it's time to reach out to the data set author. And this is one of those unfortunate situations where there's a point of confusion. It could be user error. It could be me. Uh, it, but it could be tool error or something from the data set author. It's unknown. But uh, at the end of this workflow, when I did reconstruct uh, what was logged as a big significant zip file uh, that was split and then I unsplit it, I consistently got a hash that didn't match what was in the log. So in case corpora, this is uh, this is reference data. It's good to know whether uh, we have an intact chain of custody for it. Case corpora is providing this as a demonstration that you should also have good chain of custody preserved for your own data. So let's get into how to use case corpora now, as I'm a little bit past time. Uh, case corpora is downloadable here. Uh, we provide some command line tools uh, independent of case corpora that let you uh, interface with the data, including how to run a Sparkle query. All these tools run offline. Uh, how to explore case corpora. Uh, there's a significant benefit to uh, learning, a, uh, learning how Sparkle, uh, the graph query language works. There's a playground available from Wikidata to learn the basics. Uh, for example, you could learn the cat's Wikipedia. Uh, once you have the basics down, Case Corpora includes a reports directory at its top level. Uh, that includes Sparkle files that show you uh, things that so far we found interesting, such as which uh, MIME types, which devices uh, we have found within the um, within the data. So. Uh, then you're on to exploration. Start with a question you somewhat know the answer to, and then try expanding it out. Uh, to expand it out, the documentation for case and UCO for what classes you can use are available uh, at these uh, these two sites. In conclusion, case corpora is an index of forensic metadata. There is immediate pragmatic value to the community in aggregating that data sets exist in one place, and then also being able to review chain of custody details, both for downloads and their analysis files. You don't necessarily always get both those hashes uh, in your work. Uh, sorry for that feedback. Other research value to the community is expanding the discovery language for relevant forensic data sets. This is expansion of case and UCO, seeing that, it fit, uh, seeing that these concepts meet at least your needs as uh, forensic investigators. Uh, Case Corpora is intended to be a community project. Please consider helping the community highlight relevant data. Uh, we have a workflow on the website for data set requests, um, how, what information to provide, uh, query forms you're interested in seeing answers to. All management input are welcome as GitHub issues. Uh, please also consider joining CDO to help influence the development of Case and UCO at their ontology levels. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions.